Hello, hello, hello. Hello. This is the Jane of 801 podcast. Hello. One more live stream I gotta jump on. Here we go. Okay, we're live. Yay! We did it. <laughs> Episode four, we made it. Thank God. Ashley Crocker, one of my greatest and oldest best friends, is here. Can you believe it? Welcome, Ash. So, you know what's something that's been on my mind a lot lately is um, this notion of a chosen family. And um, late, like for the past week, it's like Bruno and I are talking about it so much. I'm thinking about it so much. I'm talking to my classes about it. And like, because not all of us were born into like perfect families that we like call on for everything, right? Oh, yeah. And like, what do you do if you don't have family nearby? And um I'm just really grateful to have a friend like you that is like truly like a sister to me that I could call you literally with anything yeah. full on meltdown, pissed off, whatever. Like you're going to be like, hey, I'm here. It's I'll cool. Be there. Yeah, no family. Let me come perfect, to your house you know? and uh, help you calm down. Yeah. Um, yeah, we met when we were six, right? Five first, or six. First, first grade. grade, however old we were. You were older. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to tell the story just because I think it's so funny. I had gone to private school all through preschool and kindergarten. Meanwhile, there's a perfectly good public school a mile away from my house in the Cove. And uh, it was it had to have been like my first, our first day, our first week. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're in Miss Jacobs' class, and she calls on me to read. And I have the memory so strong in my head of looking at the book, and I do not fucking know how to read. Yeah. And Ashley's on the other side of the room, six-year-old Ashley going, me, 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 call on me, call on me, I'll read. And I'm like, she can read. Oh, Lord Jesus. As I just, like, have a meltdown that I don't know how to read and that I'm in a first grade. And then immediately I was like, I like that girl. She's my friend. That kid. Yeah, you were that kid. In kindergarten. Yeah, first grade. Yeah, and then we grew up together <laughs> and got to know each other. And I was like, Ashley's kind of weird like me. I like her. And here we are. We've been roommates for the last year. And... Yeah. You just got married and ditched me. I know. <laughs> I know. It's sad. It's, it's, it's bittersweet when yeah. we move into a different season, changing. Right. What's it like to be a married woman after so many years? How, how mm. long were you with uh, Pacific? Pacific and I were together for almost six years wow. of dating. Um. Being married, <laughs> uh, it it it's a freeing aspect for me. I mean, not everyone has to get married, right? Mm -hmm. Especially these days, it's like, yeah, what is the norm anymore? But um, for me, especially coming from an LDS background, growing up that way, it's it was just like solidifying, just like ultimate love, ultimate companionship for me mm -hmm. um and now that we're just in our own place and together with our little dog <laughs> oh, <Millie. laughs> my little the baby little um thing. it's just like we're just growing together yeah and yeah. I'm so excited to see what we're gonna do together from this point forward now that we're like officially mm -hmm. committed and mm -hmm. we're a team yeah and we know that we're there for each other no matter yeah. what yeah we did the thing it's exciting yeah and i gotta say ashley's uh husband pacific is from hawaii mm -hmm. shocker pacific is from hawaii i know um and you guys had the most beautiful wedding in Kauai, and honestly that was like the highlight of my summer yeah, like me going too. to that. <laughs> I'm sure for you. I'm like I had, yeah. a, like that was just 
watching your best friend get married is like so fun and mm-hmm. so exciting. It and was so cool. Especially when you like love the person that she's marrying and like feel like I just I think this notion really started to click for me when the four of us were driving up to float the Weaver and like none of us were happy. <laughs> Like, none of us woke up happy oh, that day. It, yeah, that was an interesting And we were day. texting each other, and we were just like, we're going to go have a good time together. <laughs> this is going to be fun no matter what. <laughs> yeah. No and bailing. Like, the drive up there totally felt like this is what family feels like. Oh, when we're yeah. all kind of like, none of us were happy with each other, but, like, we, like, had this whole day planned together, and we were just going to go have fun. We're going to make it work, no matter what. Yeah. yeah. And by the end of the day, we're, like, eating pizza at Cittabello's, oh like, having so much fun. And the whole, you know, it was, like, I was just, like, overwhelmed with the sense of, like, this is what family feels yeah. like. And I'm just so grateful for you guys. I love yeah. you guys so much. I think that was my favorite part of the day was just, like, collectively inhaling so like true. three whole pizzas together <laughs> yeah as a fan and then the waitress was like you guys want this dessert pizza like i screwed up and no one can eat it and we're, and like, we're like yes yeah. let's save it for home <laughs> yeah. and then we, we uh, finished just finished it, like, it there <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. No, i i think that biological family is super important but i also know that you know the family that you get to build yourself Mm -hmm. that's so important too yeah and not everybody thinks that they have control Mm -hmm. over that Mm -hmm. like oh these friends or this or that like they're victimized themselves it's like no you don't have control of who your biological family is but you pick those people for you yeah you choose your friends and And i think this is a you can build really good yeah family around we talk about I feel like you and I talk about this a lot because we've known each other for so long and we have so many friends we've had for so long. But we're also growing up and, like, cultivating new friendships. And something I shared with my class last night, my little journal prompt at the end of the night. Oh, my gosh. Why isn't this working? Oh. I saw something. Sorry, Instagram. We're in and we're out. Sorry, Instagram. I don't know how I lost you there, but we're back. Luckily, this whole thing is being recorded. Um, the less, the little assignment that I gave to my class last night, their little journaling assignment was go home and write down the five people that mean more to you than anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, it might be, it might take you some thinking to come up with those five people, especially if you're like feeling isolated and lonely and kind of like feeling a little bit victimized. Mm -hmm. And once you like come up with that list of five people, ask yourself, how am I showing up in this relationship? Like, how am I nurturing this friendship? Or, you know, it can be with a family member, too. And if that five comes really easy to you, make it ten. And just, like, really look at the family you're choosing for yourself and the people you're surrounding yourself with. Um, So you'll always be one of my five. Aww. (laughs) So cheesy. Love it. Um, But anyways, we're here to talk about, specifically, I worded it for you, healing facilitation. I love that F word. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Why is it so important to you that when we talk about this notion of the healing industry and 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 finding a healer and going into healing type of practices, why is it important that we use this kind of language? So, um, I didn't used to know much about any of any of this healing, facilitating it was all like same thing to me, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, But the important thing about using the word facilitation is that it takes the me aspect, the ego, um, the fact that I'm going to come in here and fix you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to heal you. Mm -hmm. Um, Nobody heals anybody. Nobody has special, you know, people have gifts. Totally. I believe you have gifts. I believe everyone does. Mm -hmm. Just takes time to discover them. But that doesn't mean that you can just walk up to someone and heal them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that in Western medicine, that's very prevalent mm-hmm. in our society. Is you go to the good, you know, doctor who's very well educated, and he says, you know, listen to me. I know best. Take this. Here's this pill. Right. It'll heal you. Take this pill. <laughs> It'll fix everything. Yeah. Even though know. it has these side effects. Yeah, just don't, you know, yeah. 
all the side effects. But um, if you were to go to an Eastern medicine practitioner um, and you said, you know, for example, I have been having the worst in GI pain. My, uh, my stomach is just so upset with whatever it is that you're experiencing. together I'm so scatterbrained mm -hmm. um you in western society you go to a you know your family doc a GI doc and oh here's this pill mm -hmm. and then you'd go to a shrink or someone else and oh here take this OCD med or whatever mm -hmm. those doctors aren't talking to each other they're not collaborating mm -hmm. whatsoever in most cases um and in Eastern medicine, that practitioner is thinking, they're listening to your symptoms, and they're saying, this GI pain and this in your head, that is the same disease occurring and becoming symptomatic in multiple places. They're connected. They're connected in some way. So then they would go through and evaluate every single aspect of your life. What's your nutrition like? What's your social life like? What do you do for work? You know, what activity level? You know, the emotional mm -hmm. stress, mm -hmm. um, relationships and things like that. And then they can dive in and do body work and other things to see, you know, where the source of these issues are coming from and then help this is where facilitating comes in. Um, help to facilitate your body to come into balance and heal itself. So that was kind of a long explanation. But full circle, a practitioner uses their hands or energy or what have you um, to then facilitate a person's body, give them almost the tools, the ability to then work through and heal themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so with energy, your friend's question was, what is it? Mm -hmm. Or how My student how last night, like, what's energy it? clearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the first thing that your, your uh, student should look into is making sure they are very careful and use their own intuition, which, and like checking on resonance with things, mm -hmm. um, which they will totally learn to do if they don't know already through your classes, through meditation. Mm -hmm. um, but just check different people out and check out the, the way they use their words. Some people do like to use healing because it's a good way to advertise. People don't know what facilitation, you know, what's yeah. what's that mean? So if you see, you know, healer on a sign, you could you could go in and inquire and say, okay, what exactly do you do? Yeah. And then paying attention to what the words they use. Do they use facilitation or do they use fix or mm -hmm. other words like that? And do they want to give you the opportunity to heal yourself? yourself. Yeah. Because I think that's something that we talk about a lot is that like, um, and Ashley and I, we got Reiki certified and we can talk about that. But yeah, I think one of the most interesting things I learned there is that if somebody doesn't believe in Reiki energy or doesn't believe in healing energy and they're like, try me, do it. The second you put your hands on them, you're going to feel that there's Resistance. no movement. Yeah. Totally. And you, you like w when you're Reiki attuned, it is totally your responsibility to say, I'm sorry, there's a blockage. Mm -hmm. You're not um, open to receiving this, and I can't work on that. I think that's so important, and that I was totally, my brain was going to the same direction. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's so important for to start with, like, meditation mm -hmm. and working on yourself, mm -hmm. becoming more in tune with yourself so that when you do go for it, healing or whatever you would like to call it, mm -hmm. um, you're more open to receiving that facilitation. Um, 
But yeah, I think that if I had to describe like what energy clearing is, it's not simple. It's just as complex as like any, you know, Western medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot to it. But there's so much to say. It's like such a big it's sober. It's huge. It's like when I'm trying to define what meditating is and right. it's like there's a hundred million answers right. to that. So I guess how I would explain it in the most easy to understand way, um, is that we are all made of energy. People think of energy as like this floating like external thing, I mm -hmm. think, sometimes. Whereas we are energy. We're made of energy. What is, like, the simplest form of energy? Electron, electron proton. Atoms. Like going crazy, molecules. building on each other. Mm -hmm. Creating so that's what we're we made of. Mm -hmm. We're just, like, vibrating creations of mm -hmm. energy that are, like, at such a resonance, such a frequency that we can see and like this my brain is energy. creating a perception of you that right. creates a human right. form right when essentially you totally. are just matter right and um <coughs> yeah we're and i i told you this quote the other day oh yeah but, the einstein um, quote yeah i don't have it uh, you know verbatim with me right now but essentially he says when talking about matter we've been wrong all mm -hmm. along like mm -hmm. Matter is kind of what I just said, this energy at such a low frequency that it's, you can see it with your eyes. Mm -hmm. Matter doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It's just how we comprehend these mm -hmm. things that we can touch and, yeah. and feel. And so um, that, when I heard that quote, pff, like blew my mind, you know. Yeah. So, if, so if you think about energy that way, I think we might be having troubles with Instagram again. Oh, no. Sorry, everyone on Instagram. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you think of energy like that, um, then it, it, I think it's easier to understand how you could possibly work with energy. Mm -hmm. I think the next step to understanding energy is that it's not just inside of us. The energy extends out through all of us, mm -hmm. you know. Lots of people describe it as like your aura or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um, it extends out, and everything, if, if you've studied polarity or anything like that, everything is positive and negative. We are electrical currents, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So when I place my hand on certain parts of your body, it creates a current, just like, you know, a car battery. Our bodies are like little car batteries, and you have the positive and the negative and the neutral mm -hmm. containing the positive and the negative. Mm -hmm. And you can work with that. And if you didn't have the neutral containers, it would just the energy would be all over the place. So, um, so then if you understand that energy can kind of extend outside of yourself and can connect with other people, then you can start to even begin to understand the idea of working with energy, energy and moving energy. Mm -hmm. The most prevalent thing that I feel like I've learned about energy is disease or dis-ease, mm -hmm. <laughs> when something is not in balance mm -hmm. is essentially what a disease is. It just is when an energy pathway, a meridian, fen line, whatever you're coming from, Ayurvedic or, whatever tradition or you're you know, in. whatever. Yeah. Um, they, if something's blocked, if energy is blocking, that's where disease begins. Um, and so I think energy work is just another way, a holistic way to approach health mm -hmm. and medicine mm -hmm. and life <laughs> and mm -hmm. trauma and everything. Um, you go through and find those blockages and work through them get back into balance, and then that's helping to facilitate someone into balance. That's when someone heals. Yeah. 
that's when someone yeah, recovers. And yeah, and they, you have to be open to it. And so I think that people who don't know anything about energy work and they walk through an energy worker's door. That I think nervous. I think <laughs> I, it makes me nervous. Yeah. Because it's so, it's a very, woo, yeah. like people are, mm -hmm. I was that way yeah. not very long ago. Like, yeah. woo, woo. Well, speaking I don't of know how being I feel that way that. not long ago, let's let's backtrack to where this all started for you. Tell us about mm -hmm. your education, mm -hmm. certifications, like Ashley Crocker. What are the initials after <laughs> your name? ATC. Which means? A certified Athletic Trainer. Okay. So that was my undergrad. Um, that you did so at BYU. I did at BYU. Which is a great program, I've heard. It is a great program. The U also has a really great program, but um, yeah, I was there my first year. Um, yeah, so I guess I started my undergrad with a very clinical mm -hmm. mindset. It's a very, like, you manipulate things and you know, you work things and very scientific, not energetic whatsoever. Um, I had to do two years of clinical internships with different sports teams and things like that. So I spent a lot of time with the BYU gymnastics team. Um, I worked a little bit with the baseball team, which was a lot of fun. Long hours, though. Athletic training is yeah. long hours. Um, and then also at uh, Pleasant Grove High School with their... Yeah football team <laughs> and uh it was a lot of fun there and then I ended up in my last internship which I I spent two semesters in was in the dance department kind of when things got like really interesting that's for you. when I was like yeah honed in and was like whoa and you there's something to do you feel like growing therapy. up as a competitive dancer like you said mm -hmm. um do you feel like that kind of influenced you to be more interested in this definitely yeah I wanted well I think it was like meant to be you know mm -hmm. because I requested I was like I have to go to the dance training room because I've heard about the athletic trainer for the dancers at BYU her name's Brenda Critchfield she's amazing manual therapist athletic trainer she has tons of experience um, and I'd heard a lot about her, and that she can teach you a lot that the other you don't learn other places. Okay. Um, manual things. Yeah. A lot of athletic training, in my um, experience, was you know, hook them up to ice and stem, and u do ultrasound, and using like tools and taping and things like that, which is good stuff, but. Especially like the ice and stim, I've just got a weird relationship with electrical stimulation or mm -hmm. tens units at this point because mm -hmm. it just it's a band aid. It, didn't it feel doesn't right to you. Yeah, it felt very like ugh. I'm not helping. You're not healing. I'm me yeah. I like these, especially with the gymnasts and, and things like that. So it was like oh, these girls are working so hard. They're breaking down, and I don't feel like I'm doing enough to. Build them up. Yeah. yeah, help maintain mm -hmm. and prevent. Um, side note, a lot of Eastern medicine is based on prevention, number mm -hmm. one, preventing disease. Yeah. And then two, uh, maintaining balance, whereas Western is once a symptom presents, then you handle the problem, mm -hmm. right? Um, but anyway, so yeah, I... I went to the dance training room and I learned a lot of manual therapy techniques using your hands. Once I used a stim machine in my two semesters there and twice I used ultrasound. The rest of the time the girls would, and boys, would um, sign up for appointments. Um, as a student I would just take walk-ins and you do like a 30 minute appointment for, it was specific, oh my ankle, I hurt it in class, or this or that. You evaluate and treat and you send them on their way with like a plan. Mm -hmm. um, so when I first started my first semester there, Brenda, the athletic trainer, was actually um, 
learning these new myofascial release techniques. It was like a two-week course. Okay. So it was brand new. And when she came back, she started teaching us all about it. And she's like, we're going to start using this, okay. along with the other things we had started learning, which is like muscle energy mm -hmm. techniques, which I've worked with you, mm -hmm. and also like the positional release mm -hmm. things. Um, um, but this was different because it worked completely on the fascial system of the body. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the first time I'd ever heard about fascia. Yeah. Besides, like, your plantar fascia on your feet. People get plantar fasciitis. But that's pretty much... I think the first time I ever heard about fascia was when you started doing this. Right, <laughs> yeah. Because it blew my mind. Yeah. It was amazing. And so... Um, and so fascia is, like, yeah. a small... It's like a thin layer of muscle that, like, covers the whole body. Is that correct? Is that so it? it's a connective tissue. Um, and it is... If you think of it like a 3D spider web... So it's not just in the skin. Mm -hmm. It's through your brain, through your arteries, blood, you know, mm -hmm. veins, you all your that. organs, your muscles, your skin, fascias holding it together. Okay. Um, and in this technique, she learned and taught me that um, fascia is an extension of your brain almost. So your fascia holds memories, it holds trauma, it holds emotional or physical mm -hmm. trauma. And I think that's mm -hmm. something that as Westerners we get really hung up on. It's like physical trauma is this, emotional trauma is this, they're different mm -hmm. things, whereas they can totally And you heal them in different ways. In different ways. Yeah. Like you go to this person for that, this person for that. Mm -hmm. um, but... Yeah, so fascia, 3D spider web, and when trauma happens, tightens up. Okay. Tightens up, holds those memories, holds that trauma. Um, and so the man who came up with this uh, technique, I believe his name is John Barnes. That could be wrong. Wow, since I've if anyone knows she's that. wrong, correct us. Yes. <laughs> and it's not the typical, because I'm in massage school right now, and myofascial release there is like a very aggressive, um, deep tissue technique. Mm -hmm. This is totally different. So the idea is that fascia does not react well to deep, intense pressures. Mm -hmm. um, hit someone, or if you're like really pounding into them, it tends to tighten up more. That's mm -hmm. our body's response. Um, but with this technique, you have specific hand placements, and you find the body's barrier, which is really important to use for the practitioner, to use their intuition, mm -hmm. to use, you know, really feel for that. So you apply pressure down until you feel like, find that barrier, and then you separate apart till you find that barrier till it just stops mm -hmm. it feels like nothing mm -hmm. so patients when they first you know you're doing these things they're like what are you doing you're not doing anything and as the five to eight minutes you ho you're holding these things mm -hmm. go on you can feel it like melts like butter yeah. if you can go further down and pull further out and um oftentimes People will have emotional releases. Mm -hmm. When their fascia releases, mm -hmm. they'll have an emotional response to that because, let's say, they injured their leg in a car accident. That was really traumatic mm -hmm. for them. That was sometimes the emotional Mentally aspect. And physical, yeah, yeah, the emotional like aspect can be even scary. worse mm -hmm. than the physical, the physical trauma. Um, and so you'll ha have emotional releases as well, which is amazing. Um, also, some results you'll have with this technique is um, fascial unwinding. So you start with one part of the body, and like I said before, fascia holds memories. So you get in a car accident, you get whiplash. Mm -hmm. I'm working on your neck, let's say, with this myofascial release technique. And your head starts going through, you know, wow. the motions of that whiplash and at that point your fascia is going through those and unraveling all mm -hmm. of that trauma mm -hmm. 
finally it's able to let it go, yeah. release it, heal, come into balance so it's not so tight anymore. It's loose. It's where it's supposed to be. Balance. And then from there, the client, patient, whatever you want to call them, they heal themselves I from there. Mm -hmm. From something so subtle. Subtle, yeah. So I'm really becoming more interested in the subtle mm -hmm. and possibly more energetic techniques mm -hmm. rather than what I used to be very interested in, the, you know, Just snap, the crackle, pop. Type of thing. Yep, and really getting in there, tearing things up, um, which is sometimes you need mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. sometimes you have injuries that get stuck in this, this cycle of inflammation and you have to get in there and break things up, almost create... An, another injury yeah. in a way yeah. so that it sets that cycle over again. Okay. And so she helps heal from there. So this like hands-on stuff, um, it, it seems to me like learning about this myofascial stuff is when you started to realize the power of touch, mm -hmm. the power of, um, call it the laying of hands. Yes. I love that. Um, that was a big thing for me in Reiki. I know. There's like, like so many ways I want to go a with giant, that. I know. I'm like thinking of all the ways <laughs> this could go. But it was like a giant light bulb just yeah. went off in that, in that class. So, so I think, yeah, Talk where I want to go from this is like you come from a long line of LDS priesthood holders. Mm -hmm. And you're a female, so mm -hmm. technically you don't hold... You don't hold that healing power of laying of hands, am I the correct? Priesthood, Technically, priesthood in, power. in, that, in yeah. that sense. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, and if anyone has opinions or knowledge on this, please comment. Please share. This is literally a conversation, a conversation that we had, like, after our Reiki healing, and we were talking about, like, because I've learned so many stories about how the Buddha, the Buddha laid his hands on people mm -hmm. to heal them. Mm -hmm. Jesus would lay Jesus. his hands on yeah. And then you're, and I'm like, isn't that a kind of thing they do in the priesthood? And you're, and I'm like, interesting how I believe, like, you guys, okay, I'm going to look at the camera for this. <laughs> if you know Ashley, I'm not trying to send, like, a million clients your way because you don't really have a practice okay. yet. Yeah. But the <laughs> way that Ashley listens to the body, like, I'll literally be like, Ash, my back is all fucked up because of this. And she'll be like, okay, let's work on it. The way that you lay your hands on the body and, like, close your eyes and go into this, like, mm -hmm. intuitive state, it's like, well, you have literally generations of men who have done these practices in your DNA. Yeah. And, yes, perhaps the philosophy of that religion doesn't say you have that power, mm -hmm. but I feel like you do. <laughs> right. And I mean no disrespect. I know. I, I mean no disrespect either because coming from religion it's a lot of who I am yeah yeah um but yeah in my understanding and I've had people argue a little bit with me about this mm -hmm. so so argue with us argue down. with me I would love it um but be nice <laughs> but be nice constructive arguing um but yeah men primarily have the power of the priesthood, laying on of hands, um, and then women primarily have the power of childbearing and mm -hmm. nurturing. I think that nurturing is a power, mm -hmm. totally. Not everyone is very, has that ability in them, but um, yeah, so that was always kind of just a cut and dry, like black and white thing for me. Mm -hmm. And even when conflict started coming up, like, women should have the priesthood, and people were, like, up in arms, especially, mm -hmm. you know, all these women, I was like, no, like, I don't need that. Like, men have that power. Mm -hmm. I have my power. Like, and we come together, and it makes something great. Like, it, it was fine to me. Yeah. Until, you know, maybe a year or two ago, maybe more than that, actually, but in our Reiki class. Do you want me to talk about my light bulb moment? I would love that, but I would love to go to a break for just a minute. Oh, great. Because I feel bad that we lost our Instagram again. Oh, so we have to be plugged in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to just go to a quick break before we get into this, like, really heavy subject of <laughs> women holding the priesthood. <laughs>
back. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go ahead and say deepest apologies to Instagram because uh, you're not getting any more live streams today. Um, this is my fourth episode, and um, we're running this whole production just me. Just me. Dave, I wish you were here. Dave takes care of everything. But, um, yeah, just reminding everyone that sometimes you're trying to do new shit and you don't really know what you're doing and you screw up and <laughs> you just keep going anyway. So, sorry to everyone who watches through Instagram, but you're going to have to get on Facebook, I guess. Um, so, let's get back to where we were, Ash. Mm. Um, the light bulb moment. The light bulb moment when we were at home after this Amazing Reiki certification through Golden Aura Reiki. Go follow Alyssa Yoga. Um, she she is, has a Reiki. Yeah, Golden Aura Reiki is yeah, her page. Yeah, her and Reiki page has a yoga page. She's just an amazing person down located down in Provo. And um, I literally was like, you were just about to start massage school. Mm -hmm. And I like just felt I had had one Reiki experience before in my life. And I just like really wanted to... Like, I was, like, kind of calling in, like, something. I remember you saying, like, all these people, like, Reiki just keeps coming at me. Like, yeah. people are talking about it. People are asking me if I do that. Uh -huh. I'm like, I should probably get Reiki certified. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I feel like we should. I should check this out. And then literally, like, all of a sudden, like, this person I randomly started following on Instagram because she lives in Utah mm -hmm. and is a yogi. Is like, I'm hosting Reiki certification level one in Provo, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Ash, do you want to do this with me? It's in like a month. And you were like, yeah. And I was like, sweet. And it was this really cool, like, I think it was like eight hours. Mm -hmm. We drove down to Provo. We had this great Tired. afternoon in a yoga studio. And Alyssa is like definitely a kundalini style yogi. So we learned a lot about that tradition. And then, of course, we learned about how amazing um, we got Reiki attuned and we learned about what Reiki is. And then Which we got to practice on each like, other. The attunement <clears throat> was one of the most spiritual experiences. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. For me, in yeah. my life. Like, That's, I love I've felt that. the spirit. You know, we were talking about religion and stuff before a little bit. I'd felt the spirit, but just not. It was like pulsing through mm -hmm. my body like mm -hmm. whoa I can feel it mm -hmm. so that was really cool at least yeah. you could call it the spirit maybe the energy whatever yeah whatever people want to call, call it whatever you want whatever maybe those the two things are different I don't like to pretend like I know everything <laughs> <laughs> but, but you are you have such an innate wisdom and it's been so amazing to kind of watch you you know, you watched me go down my path to mm -hmm. Buddhism, and then, you know, I've been able to watch you go through this path of, like, learning what a healer you are, what a humble healing facilitator you are. Mm -hmm. And um, Reiki was just, it was really cool because I, we, I feel like we really got to learn about the power of, like, human energy and the energy of the earth. Mm -hmm. And when you um, intentionally flow that, through another person, like you said, we're all electrical currents, and you and I got to practice on each other for the first time when we got attuned, mm -hmm. and it was like, as soon as you put your hands on me, I could feel the energy flowing, and then we do this thing called beaming, when you stand <laughs> far back, and I love beaming. It, Ashley was cracking me up that night, because we were talking about it, and she's like, Jane, I was fucking beaming, fucking beaming, and you were like, standing far away from me, like, sending energy to me. And it felt like you were pressing into my lower spine. Mm -hmm. And, like, I could feel this, like, and kundalini awakening start in the lower spine. And I could totally feel this energy kind of moving there. And then I realized that you weren't even touching me. And that's when we were both like, oh, Whoa. shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. Oh, I'm so glad we had that experience. Oh, together. that was so much fun, yeah. And I uh, can't wait to go to level two with you. Um, and so we did that, and then you started massage school mm -hmm. at Myotherapy. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to do that? So, <coughs> going back to my experience at BYU, um, Brenda, the woman I, like, revered, right? Mm -hmm. She, uh, I was asking her, okay, what do I gotta do? Because I started falling away from 
traditional, you know, athletic training, like being an athletic trainer for a sports team mm -hmm. just wasn't resonating with me as mm -hmm. much anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, Brenda, what do I have to do to like do what we do in here? Yeah. Pretty much Continue like, down work with path. people from a client to client basis for, oh, I hurt specifically here, specifically here, or, you know, even dealing with emotional mm -hmm. things. Um, I was like, what do I got to do? And she was like, I would say go to massage school. Get that license to touch. Learn about all of this amazing, super interesting stuff. And since I've been in massage school, it's like every single day in class we're learning. I think everyone should. I was telling Jane this the other day. I was like, I think everyone should go to massage school. Seriously, I'm like, I want to go do it. it I want to learn what you're learning. Like So refreshing. Just very refreshing. Mm -hmm. um, to it's learn. not like this. I think we think of massage school like the way that it sometimes is advertised is this like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And Guess I'm I'll getting, go to massage school. Guess I'll go become a masseuse when yeah. it's like the laying of hands and the body work that you do and that you learn is so, so, so important. And mm -hmm. I don't think I started to realize that until last summer when my knees started like totally failing on mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. and I've never had an injury in my life and the sports doctor is like stop practicing yoga stop sitting on the ground your knees are going to be ruined and that's when I got really serious about like seeing an acupuncturist and a massage therapist and seeing you regularly and, and having you work on me it's such a thing to be taken so seriously yeah it is um Self-care is not right. prioritized. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if there was no, like when I went to the sports med doctor, they immediately um, x-rayed my knees and they he was like, there's no injury here. Mm -hmm. And so there was really nothing he could do, mm -hmm. but there's he recommended. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, but your knees are very swollen and I'm very concerned. And I loved this doctor and I'll always go back to him because right. he said, I recommend acupuncture. I that's recommend so taking turmeric, nice. and I recommend you go see my physical therapist that's upstairs. And the same physical therapist was amazing. He was yeah. like, so you practice yoga? That's a you great... Go a pr see, that's mm -hmm. a definitely a more holistic yeah. setup, right? Yeah, right and there. now I'll go back to him if I ever hurt myself again. Right. Sometimes doctors, when you go, oh, well, I was thinking about trying some other modalities mm -hmm. like this or this or that. They're like, turn yeah. around and walk away because... They're not going to make money off of you doing acupuncture. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's really nice to hear. And I'll just say real quickly, I think that in our lifetimes, Eastern and Western medicine, is, they're going to totally come together. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see some really cool stuff start happening. Yeah. Maybe some, like, actual quantifiable data on energy work. Mm -hmm. And then we can possibly scientifically explain to people when they go what is energy yeah. what is energy clearing mm -hmm. it's gonna be like this is what it is you know but mm -hmm. as of right now it's very subjective it's I guess. very woo woo -woo it's like, very woo woo I feel like when <laughs> I tell people that I'm Reiki certified I have no idea if they think that I'm like some weird hippy dippy right or if they're like wow that's you know mm -hmm. you don't know right you don't know and sometimes yeah. I feel like a big reason why I started this podcast is that outside of, like, my five family, chosen family members, I feel like outside of us, I don't know, I don't know people that, like, understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. And that's such a big reason why I wanted to start this show is to, like, l leave, like, a foundational concept of, like, mm -hmm. consciousness, energy, energy healing, facilitation, meditation, like, it's, it's real. Yeah. It's all real. It's real. It's very it's real to me. Yeah. And mm. most people. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I, I love to give people who, who are just starting to understand energy or who are skeptical. It's like, have you ever walked into a room and you weren't there when it happened, but a fight had just happened? Mm -hmm. And like you walk into the room and it's like, Ooh, I can feel the energy in here. Mm -hmm. Like something's. You don't know exactly what happened, but, like, something's off. Yeah. Or you walk into a room and 
two people are like crushing on each other or mm-hmm. whatever and you're like ooh I can feel it you can it. sense like a connection yeah you can two consense people. it mm-hmm. that's that same concept we were talking about earlier that's mm-hmm. that electrical we're all connected we're all energy we're all a part of this universe and who's to say that like us as magnificent human beings with consciousness made of stardust, complete energetic beings, how could we not facilitate healing through one another? Why do we believe that we must make pills in a lab, in a lab, (laughs) to heal us instead of like going to a body worker and getting like your energy pulled from you and then looking at what's there? I think we've uh, fallen so far away from our roots. Mm -hmm that we and we want something quantifiable something we can look on a chart and say look at this works or whatever Mm -hmm. we want scientific answers we want to quantify everything everything, and so that's just kind of the direction it's gone in terms of evolvement you know Mm -hmm. um so so back to um why you went to massage therapy school because Mm -hmm. you wanted to like I wanted to learn more about how to use my hand uh-huh. and how I benefited being, I think being in the dance training room was so rewarding. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed going to my clinicals because yeah. I felt like I was really helping these that dancers. Supportive. Yeah. Whereas other times that when I would go to my other clinicals, it was like, uh huh, I just feel like I can't like do enough. And you were like in enough. first responder situations where yeah. like the kid on the football field gets his leg smashed and you're the first person that has to do something run out on there yeah yeah um instead of like working with people Mm prevented like I am so glad that you're my best friend because like for life you will be like my number one go-to healer like anytime something feels wrong in my body like I can't wait till you have your own practice Mm -hmm. and I can go to you and know that you didn't just go to massage school you have so so much tools, so many certifications under your belt. You're not just going to be like, let's give you a Swedish massage and see if it helps. Or like, yeah. let's prick you with some needles. You're going to take like such a holistic approach. Right. I'm going to try to. I'm getting so interested in acupuncture now. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. There goes another six God, years. No, yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah. This is next. Acupuncture school is like med school. It's yeah, insane. It's serious. But it's really cool stuff. Oh, I love <laughs> But yeah, soon I'll have. LMT behind my name. Right. And I can touch. And so once you finish school, like, what's next for you? Oh, I lost you there. Oh. Keep talking. Now? Yes. Okay. okay. Now. <laughs> We're back. Um, that's a really good question. First of all, my husband and I are trying to do some traveling, some world yeah. traveling. But I, another quote that I love, um, if once you stop learning is when you start dying. It sounds weird, right? right? Yeah. But life, as human beings, we're always looking for the next thing mm-hmm. and how can we build upon it and how can, I think once someone thinks I know everything, I don't need to know anymore. That's when, they, That's when you kind of start. You stop helping. You lose, you lose motivation. You lose drive. And so um, I would, as we travel, I would love to, with mas- in massage school, you take certain electives, but you only get so much. Mm-hmm. It's all about continuing education. Yeah. So I would love to get, um, I'm falling in love with Thai massage, mm-hmm. shiatsu. I'd like to get, actual certifications in those modalities um and more and beyond Mm -hmm. i just want to keep learning and learning and then find my niche you know Mm -hmm. just find what really seems to resonate with me and what seems to benefit the people i work with my clients and then kind of dive into that and then just dissect it yeah just yeah. to be, I don't necessarily want to be a jack of all trades, mm-hmm. right? Because I don't think that anyone can really be, do everything, do everything and be mm-hmm. really good at it. 
um, like my polarity instructor, she's like, there's so much to learn. I've been doing this for almost 30 years. She's been practicing polarity and wow. she's, she talks about this stuff so, it just flows out of her mouth. Like mm -hmm. she could recite like it off the bat. Yeah, it's yeah. polarity. And she's like, I am still learning things every mm -hmm. single day. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, after this, I would like to learn more. I'd like mm -hmm. to open a small practice, possibly mobile. Um, oh, cool. I and, like that idea. Yeah, and work with people um, and just build up my, my skills and my intuition. And that's that, that word is exactly what I was hoping would come up. Intuition. You, yeah, you are so intuitive. And that's kind of the same way as I teach, like, I can show up to a private with a client with like, this is how we're going to meditate today. Or like, mm -hmm. this is the yoga practice or this is the Reiki we're going to do. But really, like, actually I have a client on Friday night and I'm really excited about it because he really wants like a holistic experience. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just want to learn meditation. He doesn't just want to learn yoga. He doesn't just want Reiki. He wants to find someone that can intuitively guide him to where he needs to go. Cool. And I love my classes and doing one-on-ones um, because I can sit with you and I can, I can, I can tell you if something's not working for you. Mm -hmm. And that's when I like change course and like I, you can just, you can just feel what works for someone. And I think that the, for me, like I've, you know, I've studied me meditation for seven years now, and I feel like. I'm also not studying just one way to do it. I mm -hmm. could. I could be totally stuck in my Well, tradition. that's what I love about your workshop that I went to. Mm -hmm. You, like, explain it in such a way that you can really understand. Meditation, just like how religion is or should be, mm -hmm. is personal. Yeah. No one's going to be able to meditate just the same way as anyone else. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's why you're such an amazing teacher. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that there is there is not a – spirituality is not one-size-fits-all. Healing is not one-size-fits-all. Finding yourself, self-discovery, understanding the self, not one-size-fits-all. Mm -hmm. And so I think, A, we're really lucky to be friends and support each other down this path and also, like, have so much trust in our own intuition as women, as facilitators of healing to help people um, – Feel safe with us, feel comfortable with us, and know that, like, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you what's not true, I'm not going to tell you what's true, Exactly. I'm not going to tell you how to think about anything, I'm going to ask you to take what is true for you, mm -hmm. and if anything I say doesn't resonate with you, you can tell me, you can tell me it's bullshit, you can let it go, <laughs> I will not be upset. Yes. Um, because I think, especially when people in our position start to tell people, this is real, this is truth, mm -hmm. and this is not, that's when things can get a little bit dangerous. Right. Or, yes, yeah, so I think intuition is a huge thing. That is so important, and I'm so glad you brought up those terms, like those mm -hmm. ways of talking to someone. If you notice that someone's like, this is what you need to do, and this is how we're going to fix it, and mm -hmm. we're going to make it do this or whatever. Yeah. A good probably sign that, not feel great. yeah, it's probably not <laughs> the best person for you. And also, when choosing an energy worker, use your intuition mm -hmm. because just like the different styles of meditation, no one energy worker is gonna work for everyone. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. you gotta f do the work mm -hmm. to find someone that resonates with you, mm -hmm. and then use your intuition for everything they do and say. Mm -hmm. They tell you something, and you're like, oh, my, I don't know if that's true for me. I don't know if I feel that way. I don't, I don't, you know, meditate on it. Think about it. There could it. be so many things going on in that right. doubt right, right there. Right, that doubt, yes. There that could might, be that's you probably covering a sign. up your own truth, or it could right. be someone else's, someone pushing their truth on mm -hmm. you. Like, there's, when something doesn't sit quite well with you, there's so much to explore right. there. Right, right, and you can tell if you're energy worker has good intention and that's something also I want to bring back to the Reiki mm -hmm. was that was when I really started honing in on intention mm -hmm. and I feel so safe now anytime I do body work mm -hmm. of 
any kind because I know my intentions. Mm -hmm. I know that when I ground before I started a session, I know what my intentions are. Facilitation, love. Mm -hmm. um, I use the trick that Alyssa taught us. Like, agape. 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 If, I, <laughs> if I find myself, you know, fluttering yeah. away, agape. Like, nope. love this person. Like, you know, and... And that's and when then you I know feel, you can do no wrong. Yeah, I can't mm -hmm. hurt you, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. I think it's when people have, they might even think they're good intentions. I'm going to fix you. I'm going to fix you. I just want to help. I just want to help. I'm or, a savior. Oh, why am I not helping? Mm -hmm. Or things like that. Mm -hmm. That's when you need to check in with yourself and be like, okay, it's not about me. Where are my intentions? You know, where are my intentions? And if you feel, you know, if someone's not receiving it, help them like that's why it's great that you do reiki and teach meditation mm -hmm. listen you're not responding well or you're not receiving this maybe you could try doing this meditation or whatever mm -hmm. to help you know prep yourself mm -hmm. prep your mind and body, body and soul mm -hmm. for this work and mm -hmm. see if you become more receptive yeah yeah um Force anything. Yeah, anything is possible. That's when you have issues. There's, we're coming up on an hour here. Um, oh, right? Isn't that crazy? Because I'm like, now I want to ask you questions about healers that you've experienced. Mm -hmm. Because there's two that I know were really cool. And maybe we can just quickly talk about them so that people know. Like, you and I, we're at like very beginner level. Oh. So and beginner. We both know that because so beginner. we literally just got like we're just kind of getting our careers up and going. We're working a lot with our peers, um, and you know you have to start gaining experience to do better. Mm -hmm. But um, you and I have come across. Um, we both had healing experiences with one person who's like incredibly gifted, mm -hmm. and then I also would love to hear you talk about um, the person, the guy you found in Maui that could. Oh my god. You want to talk about him really I was quickly? like I was like who is this like second? Okay. <laughs> yes. His name is Brian. Um he is a chiropractor um but he works mostly on scar tissue. Mm -hmm. Um and he with his hands he's very intuitive, but he mm -hmm. at least says that when he places his hands over certain parts of the body or even hovers over Hovering is like a scanning is what they call it in shiatsu. Are you feeling the energy? He sees almost like, you know, through the body. So he can scan and intuitively see what's going on in your body. Me, for example, I had um, lots of scar tissue in like my small intestinal tract from years of issues. Let's just stop there. But, um, and he would go through and work layer upon layer of my intestines wow. and my stomach mm -hmm. and different sphincters and this and that. And he knew exactly where he was going. Mm -hmm. And he could tell you, yep, now I'm going into, you know, the stomach and, oh, this sphincter has a lot of scar tissue around it. No wonder you're having this pain. and. Mm -hmm. And whatever else. So that is a gift, he like we so talked gifted. about mm -hmm. earlier. Not everyone experiences, you know, they're super visual like that. Or, mm -hmm. you know, lots of people when they're doing work, they'll see colors. Mm -hmm. Or I think, is that you? Do you see colors? Um, I'm very visual. And I think that has a lot to do with right. the tantric Tibetan practicing that That's I do. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when I have my hands on a Reiki client it's so crazy like one of my clients Chloe mm -hmm. I was like denim like denim was all I was seeing really? and if you know this person it's like yes your aura is denim, denim. <laughs> that's so, so awesome so yeah and I just <laughs> think that doctor when he started realizing that he could see through his hands he's Buddhist as oh is well. he yeah he probably thought he was a little bit crazy oh yeah, I think a lot of people are afraid to kind of be like, mm -hmm. when I was I'm touching sure you, I like, I ha this kid at school is very 
naturally gifted Mm -hmm. but he sees like nature Mm -hmm. like a lot of nature Mm -hmm. I saw like beautiful rocky waterfalls and like moss and stuff he's like but I don't know what that means and then our teacher is like oh so you see like nature and the wow that's a really amazing gift we'll get into what different things could possibly mean water or earth or the you elements and then chakras to come that. into play. Mm-hmm. Chakras. <laughs> Chakra. Yeah, so, um, Apparently. yeah, and I think if you, anyone out there, you know, I get all kinds of messages on Instagram from people asking me, hey, I kind of feel like I have this, like, and I'm like, yep, meditate, go mm-hmm. find a teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's my, like, I can't tell you anything, but if right. you think you have a gift, meditate every single day, go find yourself a teacher. And I think that most people, all people, actually because we're all human Mm -hmm. everybody has a gift but and some it's going to be a lot harder to find than others for me energy i feel energy more when my eyes are closed for sure i notice in my massages Mm -hmm. i'll close my eyes and just i just want to feel with my hands um but i feel energy is like a pulsating almost magnetic at times and then I think I described this to you in, in our Reiki course. It's like, I am their pulse in a way. And I like, woo, woo, it's like going through their body and like, yeah, feel it that way. Yeah. Um, <coughs> other people get different smells. Mm-hmm. Like, it's mm-hmm. so interesting. Well, so, okay. If we ended this show and never talked about Jasmine, oh, yeah. I would feel like that we would failed. Be, that would be... That because be I think she has influenced both of us so much. And, like, you've seen her a bunch of times. My one session with her was, like, you had a very so intense, intense and, like, intergenerational and just groundbreaking that I literally, mm-hmm. like, I will be the first to admit that I am, like, nervous about going back because she showed me so much about myself and my ancestral trauma mm-hmm. that I literally like was like, what do I do with all of this? Mm-hmm. And since then I've been, you know, like I'm craving to go back to her and see her again. But um, tell us, so Jasmine is our old roommate's mom. So um, Mercedes's mom. Um, tell us oh, what, gosh. tell us what Jasmine's gift is. Do you even know how to begin? Oh my gosh. I'm okay. Let's be real. She, I need to have Jasmine on the show. Yes. Um, I I'll haven't have Jasmine. Yeah, on I haven't asked her yet, show. but I want her on the show, and, and then maybe she we can let talk a lot that. about energy. Yeah. But super dumbed down version. Yeah. She, with, without even talking, you don't have to tell her much at all. She can sense or feel energetically what is wrong emotionally, physically, both of those things. Mm -hmm. She, from my understanding, really values um, body work and talk therapy, but that talk therapy doesn't get to the root. Mm -hmm. It almost reminds me of the, the fascial unwinding and things that we talked about. It's like getting, you can talk and talk and talk about trauma or bad things that have happened Mm -hmm. but until you get that trauma out of the body until your body can heal and like let that go you're not you're not gonna make much progress Mm -hmm. you'll probably you'll you'll make some but you know that trauma is gonna stick with Mm -hmm. you um but and then she goes off into like other dimensions and other like healer. yes mm-hmm. as she can She's go into psychic. different entities she can mm-hmm. communicate with different energies um, where whether it be you know passed on individuals um, the genetic aspect mm-hmm. blew my mind as well I a hundred percent believe in genetic um, Trauma being passed trauma down. Being passed down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I didn't our our DNA. Until... Yeah. Our DNA holds memory. Yeah. And trauma. Oh yeah. That you can then give to your children mm-hmm. and then generations down the line. It's like oh, great, great, mm-hmm. great. 
grandma so-and-so yeah i'm dealing with her <laughs> shit like this is she needs intense. me to fulfill her purpose. i know and i yeah and then then it gets to this stuff where it's like oh you don't the woo-woo type yeah. stuff right mm-hmm. this is the kind of things that make people go like when i i, I don't even i've no i've told so. like maybe three or four trusted you know chosen family including mm-hmm. my mother she's one of them um about my experience with jasmine because i honestly feel like <clears throat> and maybe someday i'll be more vulnerable and share it on the show but i feel like it's so like people will be like that's nuts i uh yeah i have intentionally i've shared it with my oldest sister, mm-hmm. um, who's also seen Jasmine, who's also times. seen Jasmine, and has had amazing, Hitler. amazing, like transformative experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, but part of it, you just want to keep with Jasmine. Yeah, and and it, it becomes sacred. Mm-hmm. Like it's sacred to mm-hmm. me, and I don't want anyone's opinions or I or thoughts, you know, about it or skepticism. Mm-hmm. To like ruin it for me to, like, in a way. Intrude it's, upon yeah, the intrude upon space. this sacred yeah. space. So I I do keep it pretty private. What I what I've discovered mm-hmm. with Jasmine, um, yeah. but also with Jasmine, um, I think she's all about like build her clients up mm-hmm. and helping them to better themselves mm-hmm. and work on things mm-hmm. and to use their own intuition. Mm-hmm. She's not the type of energy worker that's gonna s- tell you mm-hmm. what you need to do or how that's you need to be that changed or fixed me feel or really safe with her is that she would be like I'm sure that you have I'm sure that you've already learned a lot of energy clearing practices through your tra- through your tradition am I correct mm-hmm. you know like and I felt like she had a really good understanding of like who I am and she mm-hmm. wasn't trying to like tell me how to be who I am mm-hmm. It was like, and the thing I love about her, she's like, you don't need to talk. You can if you want to, but your body's going to tell me. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like, she just sees you so clearly Mm -hmm. and you really don't need to talk. You just kind of surrender. And like, I felt like it had been this like weeks and weeks of experience of like going through these dimensions with her. And then it's like two hours later and I'm back and I'm like shook and like. And I think that. Like, it's hard for some people who don't want to be vulnerable and don't want to let someone into their lives Mm -hmm. like that and who don't want to be seen or violated for in another Mm -hmm. term. Mm -hmm. But I think if if anyone is feeling that way, and I know people (laughs) who feel that way, um, just think of it as like a when you go to the doctor mm-hmm. and you're telling them you tell your doctor everything your symptoms yeah. and even if they're embarrassing symptoms yeah. or things that you don't want to or you go to your shrink and you tell them all these vulnerable things you're letting them in mm-hmm. but it's so they can help mm-hmm. and jasmine right. and other really good energy workers are never trying to harm you mm-hmm in any way or violate you um and that's where the trust is like as soon as you you sit down with her you feel it and if you don't feel it maybe it's not the right time Mm -hmm. and also something that i want to add is that like if you're bringing it back to my client who last night asked me what is energy clearing the last thing i would do is be like you should go see jasmine oh yeah (laughs) she's never like last night was our first meditation class i would be like Come to me. I'm a Reiki L1. I teach meditation. We can have an experience and see how it feels. Mm -hmm. And then say that you're doing Reiki sessions with me for a long time and you're like, I kind of want to upgrade. I'm not that talented yet. I will send you to Jasmine. Yeah. And you can work on the upgrade you're Mm -hmm. doing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My sister saw Jasmine a few times and then now has started in- introducing her her kids and things to Jasmine and they all uh Jasmine's kind of working with me to like help treat my nieces and nephews so wow. it's so funny she's like yeah. oh you need to do reflexology on 
my niece's feet for these specific oh. areas and like work them and whatever and I'm like wow that is so, so cool you know yeah. she has everyone's she has the best intentions and mm -hmm. she has everyone else's mm -hmm. just she wants to help yeah. and that's the mark of a good energy worker Wow, well, what an amazing experience. Uh, an hour and a half. Uh, and the mics kind of keep going in and out. Um, Ash, is there any, I know you're, um, is there any, like, resources, any classes or podcasts or books or um, even just, like, teachers, mm. um, anything like that? Would recommend to anyone who's like I vibe on what Ashley's saying and I really want to learn something. Um, I think that a great place to start is polarity. Oh, our bodies and how we're um the makeup of that. I have several books on polarity that I could recommend like make like a little list totally. like anything off the top switch. of your head my backpack yeah I, that's okay i have a list let's we'll I put a literally list literally have a list on my phone cool. that i could yeah. put in but i think just I understanding think so energy important. period mm -hmm. is so important yeah. and then um the um admissions director at myotherapy the school i go to um her name's janet peacock and she is a very experienced um, Thai massage therapist and Reiki um, practitioner. And I think that's her, I, she's very informative. She's very sensitive to energy. And she's a teacher too. She teaches, she's gonna teach my class tonight that I'm going to for, for Thai. Um, but I, you can book sessions with her and I think that if you oh, cool. schedule okay. time um, in a session with her to just talk mm -hmm. and learn, I think she would be a great resource. Cool. Okay. But if I think of any more, like maybe we can just make a little yeah. list that you can post of r good text and yeah. people to talk to and people to see and try. Totally. Try stuff out. Totally. Because you're never going to know until you start trying. Yeah. All about exploring and that's to me why that's the whole foundation of coming to my class is that it's such a starter friendly mm -hmm. thing and mm -hmm. um, I'm just like why not yeah it gets to a point where it's like why am I resisting yeah. trying like to better myself or trying to or expand and evolve mm -hmm. like why not yeah yeah so it's gonna be so hard at first it, y'all um if you want to see better. Ashley's insanely gorgeous wedding photos or is your Instagram even public no, it's private. <laughs> Ashley's very private. I Should wish I, I could become... be like, go to her Instagram and you can learn all of this stuff. Is yours public? Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> <sighs> and that's the thing is your Instagram is so made for like your friends to see. Mm. And my Instagram has come into oh, yeah. a place of like, I want you to get to know me as a and teacher I, so yeah. that you can feel And I'm sure me. once I start getting more into my practice, maybe I'll yeah. just have a page just for... Oh, that'd be Body work, so energy, knowledge. whatever yeah. I want, yeah. and that can be yeah. public. Yeah. yeah, I am a private person, aren't I? Yeah, you're pretty private, which is why, like, mm -hmm. you guys, before we started the show, I was like, okay, Ash, anything you don't want me to bring up? like, no. And that's something I love about you is that you are very private, and and, and I trust you so much. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, I really trust you more than probably oh. any friends that I have. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you know, you're not looking for attention. You just inherently are the most, you guys, I've known Ashley since she was six, <laughs> the most compassionate, loving, kind. We've literally never had a fight. I've never been mad at you. Yeah. I've never like been like, Ashley, you did something shady. And trust me, we grew up <laughs> around people who did all kinds of shady shit. I don't know. I did shady <laughs> shit. And Ashley just was Ashley. always like. Ashley's... I'm an angel. I don't want to no, hurt anyone. Oh, my God. Yeah, Jane's so. painting a very, no, very, very... I think you're one everybody of the greatest has, people in the world. Everybody has you. light, darkness, yin, yang. And Ashley's just all light. <laughs> so, oh, man. anything you want to say to our listeners before, uh, before we sign off here? Mm. 
I think that um, if you're curious about any of the work we've talked about today, just try it out. Start simple. Don't try and like dive in into it all at once. Or you're going to be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, and then if things don't resonate for you, that probably means that you need to do some work yourself. Yeah. Work on yourself. Know yourself. Get to know yourself. Um, get out of your head and body. Yeah. And, and I think the next episode that I have you on, um, I cannot wait to really dive into your spiritual journey coming out of it. Religion, going to a very religious college, and becoming who you are today. It makes me so excited. No, I'm glad too. Um, so Actually. yeah, you guys, this is an amazing friend I have here, and. As I close off the show, as always, my wish um, and my hope for everyone listening is that as we go out into the world, whatever part of the day you are in, remember that you can start now being a more kind, more compassionate, more loving human towards yourself and towards others. You can always start now. You always have a choice. Thank you so much for listening. Sending so much love out there on the airwaves mm -hmm. and we'll catch you all in a few more weeks. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>